Hey everyone, so in this video, we're gonna continue our discussion of matrices that we began in small group this morning. Okay, so just the basics of matrices. Remember that a matrix will have M rows and N columns. So we said it has dimensions M by N. So for example, in this matrix A here, you can see that it has two rows, okay? So we would say it is two by, and then we have three columns, right? So we have one, two, three columns. So it's a two by three matrix. So every entry in our matrix is known as an element, right? So three, two, negative four, negative one, these are all elements of my matrix. So what we do is we use this kind of notation, A sub MN, okay? So that tells us the specific um, location of an entry in the matrix. So if we have A sub MN, that means the entry in the mth row and nth column, okay? So for example, if we're trying to find A sub two, three, okay? That's saying what's the entry in the second row third column, right? So we're going to go to the second row, third column, and you can see that's negative one, right? So negative one is the A sub two, three. If we're looking for A sub one, two, that's first row, second column, right? So first row, second column means we're looking at two. Okay, so that's the element there. So that's how we label and identify elements of our matrix. So equivalent matrices, right? Two matrices are equal if and only if they have the exact same dimensions and the elements are the same, okay? So we have two requirements for it to be the same. Same dimensions and the elements are the same. So notice that these two matrices are equivalent because we have two two by two matrices, right? Two rows, two columns on both of these. So the corresponding elements are the same because remember matrices are all about position, okay? Position has meaning. So for example, we like say A is equal to negative five, right? Because those are both the first row, first column. So A equals negative five, okay? B equals eight because those are both first row, second column. C equals 10 because that's second row, first column, right? And then we have D equals five because that's second row, second column. Okay, so the location matters, right? Like we were talking about this morning. So if you superimpose one matrix on the other, the ones that are in the same position are gonna match up. Okay, so let's try this problem. So we have two equivalent matrices here, right? So everything that's in the same location is gonna be equal. So we can say that X equals four, okay? And then we have two Y equals 12, and that's gonna be pretty quick to solve that equation, right? If two Y equals 12, we divide both sides by two and we get Y equals six. Um, then we have Z equals three. And then of course the last one is just telling us that nine equals nine, right? So we don't really even need to write that out. Um, so based on this, we can figure out the values of X, Y, and also Z. So what we can also do now is add and subtract matrices, okay? So you can add or subtract matrices as long as they have um, the corresponding elements in the same position, and that means that the matrices are the same size, okay? So we have to have same dimensions on both in order to be able to add and subtract. So notice here I have two two by two matrices, and I can go ahead and add them, right? So I add the elements that are in the corresponding position. So one plus negative one is zero. Negative two plus six is four. Three plus zero is three, and then five plus four is nine. Okay, so that's how you add. You add the elements that are in the same respective positions. So how do we subtract matrices? So I personally, instead of subtracting and keeping track of all the negative signs, I like to think of subtraction as addition of the opposite, okay? So like I write out the first matrix, right? And then I switch this to an addition sign and I just go ahead and multiply every element in the, same mat the second matrix by negative one. So it's gonna be like negative one will become one, six becomes negative six, zero times negative one is still just zero, and then four times negative one is negative four, okay? So now we can just do it as though it's an addition problem, right? So one plus one is how we get two right here. Negative two plus negative six is negative eight. Three plus zero is how we get three, and then five plus negative four is one, okay? So they must have the same dimensions in order to be able to add or subtract. So let's try these indicated matrix operations, right? So here we're adding, and they're both um, two by three matrices, okay? So addition is allowed. Um, so let's go ahead and add up the corresponding elements. So six plus one is gonna give us seven. 10 plus negative five is gonna give us five. Negative two plus four is gonna give us two, okay? So now in the second row, zero plus two gives us two. Negative 12 plus negative one gives us negative 13. Negative four plus three gives us negative one, okay? Now let's go ahead and try the subtraction. So we have um, two by two subtracting another two by two, right? So I'm gonna rewrite this as addition of the opposite. So we have negative one, five, negative two, three, 
and then we add it to the opposite of the second matrix, right? So I'm going to change this to a negative 7 and 4, and then we have negative 3 and negative 2, okay? So let's go ahead and add these together. So we have negative 1 plus negative 7, which is negative 8, 5 plus 4, which is 9, negative 2 plus negative 3, which is negative 5, and then 3 plus negative 2, which is 1. Okay, and so we just add them all up. Notice that the resultant matrix will have the exact same dimensions as the original matrices we combined, right? So like um, subtracting two two by twos gives you a two by two. Adding two two by threes gives us another two by three. Okay, so scalar multiplication. You can also multiply a matrix by a scalar. So this is like we're gonna take a scalar, which is like a number, and we just go ahead and multiply everything inside by that, okay? So the main thing to remember here and the most common place people make mistakes is like forgetting to multiply one element. If we're multiplying a matrix by a scalar, every single element is gonna get multiplied by that scalar. So three times one gives us three, three times negative two gives us negative six, three times three is nine, three times five is 15, okay? So let's try this problem. So we have A equals 4, 1, 3, 2, and then we're going to find the matrix negative 4A. So we just do negative 4 times this matrix, and then that means we're going to multiply every single element in this matrix by negative 4. So we have negative 16, negative 4, negative 12, and negative 8. Okay, so everything gets multiplied by negative 4. Okay, so now let's go ahead and figure out what's going on with this um, matrix right here. So we have 3a plus 2b that we want to combine. So this is kind of like connecting everything we already talked about. So I'm going to do 3a, so 3 times 4, 1, 3, 2. Okay, I'm just rewriting this equation right here. Plus 2 times b, 2 times 5, 9, 0, 7. And then I'm going to do the scalar multiplication and then the addition, right? Because remember PEMDAS, we do the multiply before we add or subtract. So I'm going to multiply every element by 3, so we have 12, 3, 9, 6, okay? And then we're going to add that to everything times 2, right? So we have 10, 18, 0, 14, okay? So since they're both the same size, right, they're both 2 by 2 matrices, I can go ahead and add them together. I'm going to add up the corresponding elements, so we have 12 plus 10, which is 22. We have 3 plus 18, which is 21. And then we have 9 plus 0, which is 9. And then we have 6 plus 14, which is 20. Okay? Okay, so now let's go ahead and try this example. Okay, so you can pause the video and try this on your own. So the first thing it wants us to do is it wants us to add A plus B, right? So we're just going to go ahead and add up the corresponding elements. So we have negative 2 plus 8, which is 6. We have 3 plus 1, which is 4. And then we have 0 plus 5, which is 5. And then 1 plus 4, which is 5. Okay, so that's how we add them up. Now when we subtract, I'm going to just rewrite matrix A, negative 2, 3, 0, 1, and then I'm going to add it to the opposite of matrix B. So we have negative 8, negative 1, negative 5, negative 4, okay? So when we add them together, we get negative 2 plus negative 8, so we have negative 10, 3 plus negative 1, which is 2, and then 0 plus negative 5, which is negative 5, and then 1 plus negative 4, which is negative 3, okay? Now for part C, let's do negative 3 times A, okay? So we're going to do negative 3 times every element of A, so we get 6, negative 9, negative 3 times 0 is 0, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, okay? Now let's go ahead and do 2A plus 3B. So 2 times A, negative 4, 6, 0, 2, right? I just multiplied everything by 2, add it to 3 times B, right? So we have 24, 3, 15, and 12. So I'm going to add up all the corresponding elements. Negative 4 plus 24 is 20. 6 plus 3 is 9. 0 plus 15 is 15. And then 2 plus 12 is 14. Okay? So that's how you would work out this problem. All right. Now for matrix multiplication. Okay? So for matrix multiplication, we have some requirements here. And it's not that the matrices have to be the same size. Okay? It's that when we have an M by N by an N by P. Okay? The number of, let's see, remember this is rows and columns, okay? So the number of columns of A has to equal the rows of B, okay? Um, and then the dimensions of the product will be the outside two numbers. So we'll get an M by P matrix as a result. So here's the formula, okay? If you like formulas, this is how we do the multiplication, but it's easier for me to explain if I just show you an example. So what we do is like, kind of like, remember I said we have to talk to ourselves when we do this, right? So if I'm doing A times B, I'm doing 3, negative 1, 2, 0, times 6, negative 3, 4, 5. So these two matrices are the same dimension, so I can multiply them. 
Okay, so I'm going to write out my resultant matrix and then I'm going to just like fill in the things that go in there, okay? So I do first row, first column, okay? And that's what goes here in this entry. My first row, first, first column entry is going to be like, okay, I take this first row and then I multiply by this first column. So I have three times six plus negative one times four. Okay, so that's going to give me 18 minus four, which is going to give me a 14 right here. Okay, now let's do first row again, but now we're going to go to the second column. Okay, so that's going to be three times negative three plus negative one times five. Okay, so three times negative three is negative nine. Negative nine minus five is going to equal negative 14. Okay, so that goes to uh, first row, second column. Now we're going to go down to the second row. Okay, so we're going to use now numbers from the second row and then first column. So we do 2 times 6 plus 0 times 4. Okay, so we have 12 plus 0, which is equal to 12. Okay, now let's go to our final entry. So we have second row, second column, right? So we have 2 times negative 3 plus 0 times 5. Okay, two times negative three is negative six, negative six plus zero equals negative six. Okay, so that is the final entry of our matrix. So that is how you do matrix multiplication. Okay, so it's kind of like you take these values and then you turn them and then you multiply the ones that are in the same um, corresponding position. Okay, so let's try this one. Okay, you can pause the video and try this on the, your own before you see what I write out as my solution. So when we do this, we're gonna get um, a two by two matrix as a result because these both matrices are the same size. So we're gonna start off first row, first column, okay? So, okay, so that means that we're gonna have one times negative four plus negative three times one, right? So one times negative four is negative four plus negative three, so we have negative seven, right? So that's gonna be our very first entry, first row, first column. Now we're gonna go over to the first row and then second column. So we do one times six plus negative three times zero. So one times six is six and then plus zero. So that's equal to six, right? So that goes right here. And then we do second row, first column, right? So we do two times negative four plus five times one, okay? So we have negative eight plus five and that equals negative three. So negative three goes here. And then we have second row and then we have second column, right? So we have two times six plus five times zero, so two times six is 12, 12 plus zero is equal to 12, okay? So now that's how we get that resulting two by two matrix. So let's try doing some other types of multiplication problems, right? So here you can see we have a one by three matrix and a three by one matrix. So let's try now multiplying these together. So remember the rule is as long as these two middle numbers are the same, we can go ahead and multiply them. And remember the outside numbers will tell us the overall dimension. So that means our solution is actually gonna be a one by one matrix. So what we do here is we just take, well, we only have one row, right? We have this one, two, three, and we multiply that by the first column. So that means our resulting matrix is actually just gonna have one element in it because we're gonna do one times four plus two times five, and then plus three times six, okay? One times four is four, plus two times five is 10, plus three times six, which is 18. Four plus 10 is 14, 14 plus 18. Um, if we do that, we get two, one, 32, right? So 32 is our solution, okay? And it's just a matrix with one element, which is also possible. So now let's try multiplying in the reverse order, okay? So this is what's different than numbers. When we do numbers, remember the commutative property of multiplication tells us that two by three, two times three equals three times two. Well, let's see what happens when we have matrices, right? So we have now, okay, so this is a um, three by one matrix and we're multiplying it by a one by three matrix, right? Because now we're doing B times A. Once again, the middle numbers are still the same, but look at what it's telling us, it's the result it's telling us the result is actually gonna be a three by three matrix, okay? So how is that gonna happen from a three by one and a one by three? Well, let's just write it out and see. So we have four, five, six, and we're multiplying that by one, two, three, okay? So we're gonna do first row, right? So first row is four, and then we do first column. Okay, so first row, first column is just gonna be four times one, which is four. Then we do first row times second column. So that's going to be four times two, which is eight. Okay, you see the pattern here? We do first row, third column. Four times three, well, that's just going to be 12. 
okay? Now we go down to the second row. So we do five, second row, first column. Five times one, so that's five, okay? Then we do second row, second column. Five times two, which is 10. And then we do second row, third column. Five times three, which is 15. Okay, now we do third row, first column. Six times one, so we have six. Six times two, which is 12. And then six times three, which is 18. Okay, so you see that's how we end up with our three by three matrix that is the result. So I just wanted to point out that matrix multiplication is not commutative, okay? You can see that B times A is not the same thing as A times B. Okay, so now the next part of a matrix. So you all are asking about determinants, which is a button on your calculator. If you push a button on your calculator, it'll tell you the determinant. Um, we'll talk about three by three determinants next week in small group, but I just wanted to show you how to find the determinant of a two by two. What you do is you multiply your diagonals, okay? So this is a matrix right here, right? This A, B, C, D. If we just change the notation a little bit, we just put straight lines right here. That means they're asking you to find the determinant, okay? So some people will write this as like D, E, T, and then they'll write A, B, C, D. And that's just telling you to find the determinant. The way you find the determinant is you multiply the right diagonal, okay? So you do A times D, and then you subtract the other diagonal, okay? So you do minus B times C. So you do AD minus BC, and that's going to give you a number, okay? So the determinant is like a number that represents a matrix. So you just subtract the diagonal products in this order, and that's how you figure out the determinant. So let's look at an example. So suppose we want to find the determinant of 2, 4, negative 3, negative 5. So this is like saying, okay, find the determinant 2, 4, negative 3, negative 5. So what I do is I multiply down this way, right? So I have 2 times negative 5 and I'm gonna subtract the other product, right? Subtract four times negative three. So that's gonna give me two times negative five, which is negative 10, minus four times negative three, which is negative 12. Minus negative becomes plus, so that's gonna equal two, which is the determinant of this matrix. Now let's find the determinant of this one, okay? Just another example. So we're gonna find the determinant of four, three, negative five, negative eight, okay? So we're going to multiply down the right, so we do 4 times negative 8 minus 3 times negative 5. So 4 times negative 8 gives us negative 32, and then minus 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15, and then we just add together. Negative 32 plus 15 is going to be negative 17, okay? So that is the determinant. So now let's find the inverse, okay? So the reason I was talking about the determinant is because you need the determinant to find the inverse. So this is how you find the inverse of a two by two matrix. And remember, we've been talking about inverses because you need inverses in order to solve um, systems of equations, right? So what you do is you're gonna go ahead and to find the inverse of this matrix, you're gonna pull out in front, you're gonna write one over the determinant, okay? This is just gonna be a number, right? Because the determinant is the number. And then what you do is you swap these two elements, okay? D and A are gonna switch positions. And then you do the opposite of B and C. Okay, so if they're negative, they'll be positive. If they're positive, become negative. So you find the determinant by subtracting the diagonal products, right? And then you do one over D, and then you just switch these elements and then make these two negative. That's how you find the inverse. So now let's find the inverse of this matrix, right? Remember the determinant we found um, because that was two times negative five, which is negative 10, minus four times negative three, which is negative 12. So that is gonna give us an overall determinant of two. So that means that when we find the inverse, this is going to be one half times, okay, we're going to switch A and D, so we have negative 5 and 2, and then we're going to make the other two elements opposite in sign. So we have negative 4 and 3, okay? So you can leave it like this, or what you can do, since this is a scalar, you're just going to multiply through, so this is going to give us negative 5 over 2. Um, one half times negative 4 is negative 2, then we have 3 halves, and then one half times 2, that's going to be 1. Okay, so that is the inverse of this matrix. Okay, so now let's find the inverse of this matrix, right? Remember the determinant we found by doing four times negative eight, which is negative 32, minus five times negative three, which is negative 15. So we go ahead and switch these signs, right? And when we add them together, we get negative 17. So this is gonna be one over negative 17. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch these elements, right? The four and negative eight are gonna switch. So we have negative eight and four. And then we make both of these have the opposite sign, okay? And then when we multiply through by that scalar, we're just going to have fractions in every element, which is possible. So we have 8 over 17, 3 over 17, 
negative 5 over 17 and negative 4 over 17. Okay, that is the inverse of that original matrix. Okay, so now let's tie every single thing we've been talking about all together and use inverses to solve this system of equations. So this is actually an application of Kramer's rule that we talked about, right? So I'm going to start off by writing my coefficient matrix. So 5, negative 4, 6, negative 5. And remember that times x, y is what gives me my constant matrix, right? 2, 1. Okay, so to solve this, right, remember we said to solve this, we need to find the inverse. So x, y is going to equal the inverse of this matrix, my coefficient matrix, um, times 2, 1. Okay, so now we're going to use what we talked about to find the inverse of this coefficient matrix, right? So step one is to find the determinant. So the determinant is going to be, let's see, we have 5 times negative 5, so that's negative 25. And then we're going to subtract 6 times negative 4, so minus negative 24. Okay, so when you do minus negative, that's going to become negative 25 plus 24, which is negative 1. So now to find the inverse, I'm going to do 1 over negative 1, and then I'm going to do this matrix. I have to rewrite it now, right? So I'm going to switch these elements so I have negative 5 and 5, and then I'm going to make those other two elements, the negative 4 and 6, I'm going to make them opposite in sign. Okay? So 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1, so I basically have negative 1 times this entire matrix, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply through by that scalar, and then I get 5, 6, negative 4, negative 5, okay? So now let me go back to this equation. So I have x, y. Now I found the inverse of this matrix. So I have 5, negative 4, 6, negative 5, okay? And so what I'm going to do now is... So now I'm going to multiply this by that constant matrix 2, 1, right? So remember how we do matrix multiplication, okay? So x, y is going to equal, so I do first row first column, right? So I do 5 times 2, which is 10, plus negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4. Okay, that's going to be my first element. And then I do 6 times 2, which is 12, plus negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5. Okay, so when I simplify this, this is going to be x, y equals 10 plus negative 4, which is 6, and then 12 plus negative 5, which is 7. Okay, so this gives me my two solutions, which are 6 and 7. So remember, I can write that as an ordered pair, right? 6, 7 is the solution to the system of equations. So this is how you would solve a 2 by 2 system of equations using matrices by hand. Um, so you can go ahead and solve this problem on your own. Um, you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing that. So remember, the first thing we do is we set up our coefficient matrix, 2, negative 5, negative 2, 4, and then that times x, y is going to equal 7, negative 6, right? So in order to solve this, we need to do x, y, and then we're going to um, say that equals the inverse of this um, coefficient matrix times 7, negative 6, okay? So let's find the inverse now of the coefficient matrix. Okay, so the determinant of that is going to be 2 times 4 minus negative 5 times negative 2. 2 times 4 is 8, and then 8 minus negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10, right? 8 minus 10 is going to give me negative 2. Okay, so that's my determinant. So I'm going to do 1 over negative 2, and then I'm going to multiply that by what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch A and D. So I have 4 and 2. And then I'm going to make these two on the other diagonal the opposite in sign, okay? So now what I need to do is multiply through by negative one-half. So when I multiply through by negative one-half, I get negative two, negative five over two, right? Negative one-half times two is negative one, and then negative one-half times two is negative one, okay? So now I have x, y, and that equals negative two, negative five over two, and then negative 1, negative 1, okay? So we multiply that by 7, negative 6. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get x, y, and say that's equal to, so we do, um, remember, first row, first column, right? So we have negative 2 times 7 plus negative 5 over 2 times negative 6, right? That's my first row, first column. Um, then second row, first column, I have negative 1 times 7, plus negative 1 times 6. So negative 2 times 7, that's negative 14, right? So we have negative 14, and then it's going to become um, negative 5 over 2 uh, times negative 6. So we have 2.5 times 6, and that is going to just add up to 1, 
Okay, so we have x, y, our very first um, element is gonna be one. And then we have negative seven um, and then minus six basically, right? So we have negative 13. Okay, so that's the solution to this system of equations. It's gonna be the ordered pair one negative 13. Okay, so that's everything for this video and we will continue talking about matrices and how to find three by three determinants in next week's class. Okay, and then we do second row, first column. So we have negative one times seven and then we have plus negative one times negative six, okay? So that means that that's gonna give us x, y equals, and then negative two times seven is gonna be negative 14, and then that's plus 2.5 times six, so that's gonna be one, okay? So we have one in our first row, first column, and then we have negative seven plus six, so that's gonna be negative one, okay? So that's the solution, that's our ordered pair, one, negative one. So that's everything for this video. Next week, we'll talk about how to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, which you really don't have to know for this class, but I'll just show you anyway um, next week in small group, okay?